Hey everybody, Carl here. Welcome back to Trails in the Sky. In the last episode, we came here to the Valeria Lakeshore following a clue gotten from an old man during the burglaries in South Bose. And what a beautiful, idyllic place we find ourselves. It's time to wrap up chapter one. We got quite an eventful and action-packed episode tonight. So, let's begin by hearing how things are around the place. Welcome to the Kingfisher Inn. Are you all here to stay? Let's see. Yes and no. How should I put it? We're here looking for a certain someone. Is there a guest staying here who loves to fish? Well, pretty much everybody who stays here loves to fish. We heard he was a friend of the old man who stayed here yesterday. Do you have a clue who that might be? Oh, are you talking about old man Kuwano? If you're talking about his fishing buddy, I think you must mean Lloyd. Lloyd? I heard he's a professional angler who came all the way here from the Royal City. It seems as though he's a member of the Fisherman's Guild there. He sounds like a pretty amazing guy. Do you know where we might be able to find him? Ha! <laughs> he's out dropping a line somewhere, of course. If I remember right, he should be out on back pier. Alright, we've, we've been there. All right, we also gotten all the recipes from here from before. Welcome to the Kingfisher Inn. Please let me know if you would like to stay. I just might. My mother and I come here every year on vacation around this time. It's a tradition in our family. My mother seems to look forward to it every time. I kind of feel bad for my father though, as he always gets left behind. Well, it's... <laughs> The Kingfisher Inn in Bows and the Maple Leaf Inn in Sice are my favorite places to stay. I'm glad. It's also interesting that you share a name with a young girl in town. It's... Coincidence? I think not. There he is. He looks like a Lloyd. Hmm. Um, excuse me. Are you the man named Lloyd who's from the Royal City? Hmm. Wow, he's really focused. He's tuned everything out of his mind but fishing. It looks like this is where my skills come into play. What are you... Just sit back and enjoy. Olivier leaned over, and with a smile that left all kinds of things up to interpretation, blew into the man's ear. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness, what in the... Who are you kids? And where did you come from? That was a dirty trick to play on him, Olivier. Yeah, that was pretty low. How do you do this evening, good sir? We tried calling out to you a moment ago, but we could see that, like a true professional, your attention was fixed upon your task. You're Lloyd, aren't you? Yes, that's right. But how did you know my name? We heard from a certain old man about you. Do you have some time you could spare to speak with us? I see. So you heard from Mr. Kuano, did you? Yeah, I saw that strange pair about two nights ago. I knew it. Can we get you to fill us in on a little more on the details? Before that, are you all bracers or something? Is this somehow related to some sort of crime? We can't say for sure, but there does appear to be a possibility. Gotcha. In that case, I'll do what I can to help you out. It was the other night when I was out fishing on my boat. I was returning to the inn, dead tired after a day of battling it out with this lake's guardian. It had gotten late into the night, and it was about the time when everyone at the inn was asleep in their beds. Now hold on a minute. What do you mean by this lake's guardian? I'm glad you asked. The Guardian is a giant salmon that swims the murky depths of Valeria Lake. It has been the feared king of the waters among fishing lovers for over a decade. Oh crap, I shouldn't have asked. It looks like you've thrown a log onto the maniac's fire. Is it really that huge of a fish like you say? You bet your last mirror it is. 
and I've been chasing the darn thing for the last five years of my life. It comes and goes in different parts of Valeria Lake and changes its feeding spots on a whim. I heard from a buddy of mine that it had appeared in these parts, so I came a-running from the royal city. Ha! Huh, now that's what I call passion. I can completely understand where you're coming from. Whenever I find something I like, I stop at nothing until I get a hold of it. For example, a bottle of Grand Chardonnay and such. In your case, steal it is more accurate. <clears throat> How about we get back to our story? So, Lloyd, what happened when you came back from fishing that night? Oh, right. I had returned the boat and was on my way into the inn, when I saw an odd couple head out onto the road from the grounds behind the buildings. Uh, onto the road? In the middle of the night? Yep, no doubt about it. They headed out on the new Ansel Path. At first I thought they were a group of people visiting from the city heading back home. But it was way too late for something like that. When I asked at the inn the next day, nobody knew a thing about it. Thought maybe I'd seen a couple of ghosts or something then. Uh, ghosts? D there are ghosts that come out here? Ha ha. Uh, so you know, the two I saw were a young couple. There might have been two lost souls who committed a double suicide after not being accepted by those around them. Ah, uh, don't tell me anymore. Oh, brother, a bracer that's afraid of ghosts. The guild is doomed. Not to mention, her habit of always wanting to hear more ghost stories and other bizarre stuff. Now, now, isn't your being scared attractive in its own right, Estelle? Not sexy, but cute nonetheless. Like a little kitten shivering in the cold. You'd better watch out because this little kitten bites! Ha <laughs> ha! Well, I was just kidding about the ghost part. But the couple did, in fact, seem to be one with a purpose and reason. I say this because the girl was wearing some rather odd clothing. What do you mean by that? I only saw her from behind, so I couldn't say for sure. But it looked to me like she was wearing some kind of school uniform. A school uniform? It couldn't be. It wasn't one from the Jenny's Royal Academy, was it? Wow, you really know your stuff, kid. You betcha. My niece goes there as well, and looked exactly like the same one she wears. I see. This whole event just got a lot more interesting. It's her! I know it's that lying tomboy for sure! We're finally on to her trail! To completion! Sorry. What? What? So she's an acquaintance of yours? Then while you're at it, tell the two of them not to fret and rush into anything they'll regret later on. If my mind isn't failing me, I could have sworn they said something about coming again tonight. Is that true? Yep. We'll meet back here in two days, is what the young man said. His tone seemed rather serious, so I couldn't help but think on it. Well, that's understandable. We appreciate the valuable information. Just leave the rest up to us. We won't let them get into any more trouble than they already are. Oh, I see. That's a relief to hear. I feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders now. Now that that is off my chest, I feel like taking a boat out and fishing again. Well, there's no time to lose. I'll leave you young'uns to your work. Man, I don't even measure up when it comes to that fishing nut. He mentioned something about a fisherman's guild too. I wonder what kind of group that is. So, how is this couple involved with the missing airliner incident exactly? If you don't mind telling me, that is. Well, in a nutshell... Shara explained that they encountered Josette in Roland. I see. That seems to be the person in question, all right. Which means that tonight is the night, huh? Yeah. It looks like we should probably get a room, just in case. We're going to be in for a late night tonight. All right, let's go ask the receptionist about a room. Let's indeed, we're spending the night at Valeria Lakeshore. Ah, yeah. Will you be staying here with us tonight? 
Yep, that's the plan. Hold on, Estelle. If there's anything that we haven't taken care of, we'd better do it now. I don't want to head back to Bose after we've gotten a room. Um, I guess you're right. Ah, uh, yeah. Get a room, you two. So, this is just another nice little reminder that, hey, we're going into some serious stuff. If you're not all wrapped up with things, you should. But I've edited the other videos now, and I know that we have not missed anything that's on my list. So, let's go. All right, then. Please come with me. I'll show you to your room. Take me places, Sofina. This is where you'll be staying. I'll leave you here, so please relax until dinner is served. This is quite a nice room. It has a certain atmosphere that you just don't find back in the city. Yeah, it's great, huh? It wasn't that expensive either. Hmm, what to do now? How about we relax until it gets dark? What a nice idea. I'd be more than happy to do just that, but is it really okay to take it easy? Rest when you can. That's part of a bracer's job, too. This is our free time, so let's enjoy a meal, take a stroll, or something else. That sounds pretty good. Wow, what a picturesque view. The entire lake looks like it's glowing. Too bad we can't see the royal city on the opposite shore because of the haze. But from here, it's easy to tell that this is the biggest lake in the kingdom. This lake is like a fisher's dream come true. I better be a blast to throw a line in those waters. Then how about it? Might be a nice change of pace for you. Yeah, maybe I will. What are you gonna do, Joshua? Me? Uh, let's see. There's a book I've been meaning to read. Maybe I'll just sit in that chair and relax. How old are you again? Only geezers talk about sitting back and relaxing. Young boys are supposed to get out and move their bodies. <laughs> I'll leave that part up to you. Sometimes you can be such a drag. Oh well, I should hurry up and decide on a fishing spot. Hmm, somewhere around that pier looks like it might be a lucky spot for bites. Ah, uh, yeah. It's fishing time. Let's make a little save here. It's just a stall at this point. Wow, that's been a while. It's weird not having a trail of people. So this is pretty nice. I think maybe I have to go inside, right, and talk to someone about getting a rod. Let's see what the others are up to. Here's, oh, of course, Cher and Olivier are having a drink. Sherazard and Olivier are having a drink of chilled fruit wine together. Shara, should you start drinking again when it's only noon? No matter how light the liquor is, drinking too much is bad for your health, right? Don't worry, this stuff is just like water. Estelle, sometimes we all need to take a breather. I understand your concern for Shara, but you can leave her to me. Actually, Shara's not the one I'm concerned about. Huh? Ah, oh, you're gonna learn the hard way. I invited Shara for a friendly drink, and she readily agreed. It seems as though she's finally been taken in by my charm. That brash self-confidence may cost you your life. <laughs> I love it when the characters say dark things with a smile. By the way, Estelle, what happened to Joshua? Did he dump you or something? Yeah, actually he did. Really? I invited him to come fishing with me, but he brushed me off for a book. Don't you think that's a little cold-hearted? What, that's it? You had me going there for a minute. <laughs> Estelle's the only one who doesn't see it. People come here to enjoy fishing. If you'd like to borrow a fishing pole, we can loan you one, so all you need to do is ask. Can I put? Can I borrow a fishing pole? Can, can, can I please borrow a fishing pole? What's on the menu? Hmm. I got some good fish in today, so please look forward to your meals. 
Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't taste as good as the meal you get yourself. All right. There's a fishing pole propped against the rack. Fishing poles propped... Ag if only there was a way. Oh, you're in your room now. Oh, are you staying here too? Let's enjoy this wonderful place together. I wonder what's for dinner today. I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. Let me guess. Fish. It's more likely than you think. Just wanna have a little look around. See if anything else is going on here. Right, where's Joshua though? He said he was gonna read a book in the corner. Find a chair. There he is. Sneaky. Aren't you going to fish? That pier looks like a nice spot. How about you try too, Joshua? You're not so bad yourself, you know. Just not as good as you. I think I'll just sit here and watch it all. Watch if all the fishing practice has paid off. So can I fish? Oh, could I early? Maybe, all right, maybe I had to do something else. All right, so here's an important achievement. We can fish a total of 10 times at Valeria, but we can also choose to stop early. We got to fish all 10 times in order to get the achievements. Yes, this looks good. Definitely the best spot. <laughs> now let's see about casting a few lines. Start fishing. <gasps> Crap, I don't have a fishing pole. But I wonder if somebody at the inn has a spare one I can borrow. But this, c c come on. This is what I've been trying to do. Can I get a fishing pole? Um, do you have a fishing pole I could borrow? Yes, of course we do. They're right over here and they're free to use for anyone lodging here. Wow, really? Score! Progressive rod. This is a pretty nice rod to be loaning out to everyone. All right then, I'll put it to good use. Please enjoy yourself. Oh, I will. So there are different things we can fish, mostly fish, but also a pair of boots, which I would like. Now, the boots and the shoes, I'm trying to collect them all, but they are not an achievement as far as I'm aware. It's just the armor that is. But still, let's start fishing. So, fishing in the trails games definitely involves, evolves over time. It starts out being pretty primitive, but it gets cooler and cooler as we go along. With some fun mini-games in certain games too. Let's see, from this pier, which would be the best place to drop a line? So, to the west around the pier, to the south where the sun is hitting the water, or to the east where the shade reaches. Now, I believe if we want holy boots, we gotta go to the south. And these are the boots in question. Right around here looks nice. Come on, fishy fishy fishes. What should I do about bait? So we can use a lure, a live bait, or a fly. In this case, we're gonna use a lure. Alright, let's sit back and relax and see what we come up with. Ah, yeah. Life of a fisherman. <gasps> Sweet! I got a bite! Now this is the critical part. How should I bring it up? So we can reel it in all at once. Wait a bit before reeling it in, or wait until it gets tired before reeling it in. In this case, we're gonna reel it in all at once. Alright, let's see what we got. <laughs> Reeled in holy boots. Curse you, holy boots. This victory is yours. Let's see. What should I do now? So, this is where we have to continue fishing. We can get some other fish here too. And I think I would like to do just that. One of the prominent fishes that I would like to get is the salmon. Since we can make some pretty good food with salmon. So the boots themselves, I believe they have like one defense, but like plus three to move, which is kind of fun. Uh, let's go to the west. And then we're going to use a lure. And wait until it gets tired before we reel it in. So it's just, you know, three dialogue boxes that, depending on the choices, gets you a different outcome. There's no real skill here. It's just the first iteration of this. So in this case, we are going to wait until it gets tired. And then, whoop. Quapow. 
That's a salmon. <gasps> yes, yes, yes! I am a goddess of fishing. What a haul! This may just beat the record for the size of my best catch to date. I thought for certain it was just a regular fish by the way it tugged on the line. Let's see. What should I do now? You should continue fishing. Can I speed this up? Uh, alright, I sh probably shouldn't have switched fishing spots. Let's just stick to the west. Then let's just try a couple of other options here, just for fun. Like, what if we do live bait? We go fishing, and we reel it in all at once. Smelt? What a little fishy! Josh was gonna make fun of me if he sees this. Should I just eat it now to hide the evidence? Let's see, what should I do? You should continue fishing. You should don't change. This time we're gonna use a fly. Let's go. <gasps> we got a bite. We're gonna reel it in all at once. Smelt. Again. Alright, let's try continue fishing. Don't change. Let's let's do a lure. Let's maybe get some get some more salmon. I wonder what happens if I do wait a bit before reeling in. What do we end up with then? Liberal carp. This one is just my warm-up. Alright, let's continue. Don't change. Alright, let's use a lure. And we're gonna get some salmon. Dude, this is really nice and relaxing, though. There's something about Valeria Lakeshore in particular that just... I think it was around this time playing the game that I really came to, like, fall in love with it. Because first chapter... Not that this is the height of gameplay. But first chapter is a real slow burn, you know? Essentially, once we get the second chapter... Well, I say first chapter, as in the game first chapter, it's a slow burn, because once we get to the second game, we're just going ham all the time, like everything sort of comes together in a big way, but it's just a big setup and just a being pulled into the, pulled into the world itself. I really appreciate it just around this time. It's getting a little late for me, but I, I would rather play this than sleep right now. I also think the times where I really get into the Trails games also reflects my mental state at the time. Like, it's when I feel like I want a bit of extra... I don't know if escape's the right word, but... Distraction? It's just... It's interesting how it comes in... This goes straight back to the same spot. How it comes in periods when I play different games. I've completed the Trails in the Sky trilogy 100%. And I have done Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, 100%. And I started on the 3rd before I fell off a little bit. But there we go. Hobbyist. We fished all day. The sun has set. Man, it's already starting to get dark. I guess I ended up with a pretty good catch after all. Check this out, Joshua. Look what I caught. Huh? Aww. No, Joshua. Joshua? What's this? The book Hundred Days War seems to have been left on the table. Estelle picked it up. I wonder if Joshua just forgot this. For being so sharp, he sure can miss things sometimes. I guess I'll just have to take it to him myself. Then again, I wonder where he could have taken off to. Indeed. A mystery. The book, though, is a book that we can open up. A book about the hidden truth behind the Hundred Days War campaign. Ten pages? Alright. Let's go. Timestamps are down below if you wish to skip, but here we go. The Hundred Days War. Outbreak of War. In spring 1192 of the Septian calendar, a single cannon shot shook the Hawken Gate situated in the northern part of the Liberal Kingdom. This marked the beginning of an invasion later known as the Hundred Days' War, and the moment in which the raging Golden Stallion assailed the noble White Falcon. During this time, the Hawkengate was little more than a reinforced medieval rampart, 
It easily succumbed to the round fired by one of the Empire's Reinford company-built Orbal tanks, leaving a section of the aged barrier fractured beyond repair. And as the Liberal Kingdom's other defensive walls were hit in succession by a fuselage of cannonballs, they too fell under the explosive impact and were reduced to a mountain of rubble. Declaration of War At about the same time that the first cannon shot was fired, a single letter from the Erebonian embassy located in the royal city was delivered to Queen Alicia. More specifically, it was a writ containing a declaration of war by the Erebonian Empire upon the Liberal Kingdom. In terms of diplomatic wisdom, the propriety of the declaration was established by being handled prior to the preemptive strike, but in this instance there was hardly a difference in time between when the two occurred. In short, firing the first shot at the exact moment war was declared on the Liberal Kingdom made it possible for the Erebonian Empire to guise the preemptive strike as one of legitimacy when the first bombshell hit. This could be referred to as a new diplomatic war tactic, though one incapable of being employed without a meticulous level of planning used in concert with an orbital communication system. Blitz Tactics After the destruction of the Hawken Gate, the Imperial Army began its invasion of Liberal in earnest. Overall, its troop strength was made up of 13 divisional units. This proved to be roughly half of the Empire's entire military force, and was such a massive deployment that it exceeded three times that of Liberal's entire royal army. Within a month after the outbreak of war, the Imperial Army had occupied nearly all of the Liberal territory. Only the Gransel region and Lyston Fortress, situated just off the shore of Valeria Lake, remained in opposition. So rapidly were these blitz tactics carried out, that even the Calvert Republic, an ally of the Liberal Kingdom and longtime rival of the Erebonian Empire, never had the opportunity to dispatch auxiliary forces to aid its partner. However, in a following attempt by the Imperial Army to take direct control over the Sai Central Factory and Malga Mine, they instead found themselves on the verge of being forced to surrender to Queen Alicia, who remained entrenched within the royal city. Staging a counterattack. Two months following the outbreak of war, the battle situation was altered in a way which no one could have previously anticipated. Unbeknownst to the Erebonian army, three patrol ships were quietly being developed behind the walls of Lyston Fortress. Upon completion, they were put under the direct the direction of veteran commander General Morgan, and a large-scale counterattack was launched. These patrol ships, shielded by armor far superior to the tanks of their Imperial counterparts and mounted with a substantial amount of high-performance orbital weaponry, had also managed to boost their speed to over 1800 selge per hour. Using these crafts, an independent mobile force lauded as the elite of the elite, Liberal's forces mounted an attack and quickly recaptured the checkpoints connecting the various regions. And as this strike was underway, they simultaneously launched an amphibious attack from Lyston Fortress and, one by one, defeated the remaining isolated Imperial divisions. The End of Hostilities After just three months following the outbreak of war, the larger part of the Imperial Army's remaining divisions finally surrendered. However, as capitulation was at hand, there were indications of a surge of further reinforcements from the Imperial homeland, a move which galvanized other continental nations to follow suit and join the Calvert Republic in supporting Liberal. Together they lambasted the Empire, and a formidable group of allied forces began to materialize. Amidst all the chaos, the Septian Church, in cooperation with the Bracer Guild, called for an armistice, and after approximately 100 days from the start of the war, the hostilities came to an end. In the following year of 1193, in the Herb Royal Villa on the outskirts of the royal city, a peace treaty was signed by both the Liberal and Erebonian sides. Although no indemnification was made, an official apology was offered up by the imperial government, as they expressed that they had met 
as they expressed that they had, made a grievous error attributed to a tragic incident occurring within their borders. All right, that was one way of putting it. All right, history. Gotta know your history. You're doomed to repeat it. Oh, it's gotten late. I wonder where Joshua is. So how did your fishing go? If you happen to catch anything good, I'll cook it up for you as part of the service. Oh, that's so nice of you, Leonard. How are you two? So you can hold your liquor, can't you? <laughs> I think I've changed my mind about you. Come on now, drink up. Uh, hold on, Shara. Don't you think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves with this pace? It could interfere with tonight. What are you whining about now? Come on and drink, you third-rate musician. Or are you saying that you can't keep up with me? Oh, yikes. Estelle, don't just sit there and watch. Do something. Sorry, bud. Once she gets started, there's no stopping her. But you don't have to worry. Shara never gets plastered. Um, shouldn't you be worried about me? Nah. Things are starting to heat up in here. That picture of her is so creepy. I don't like her eyes that way. Maybe I should just strip... Maybe I should just strip down naked. If you take off anything else, we're really going to be in trouble. Is she always like this? Whenever she's on the job, she manages to behave herself. But when it comes to having a drink, even my dad can't keep up with her. Is that the case? At any rate, I'm kind of interested in seeing her go wild. Or am I going to pass out from the drinks first? All right, have fun. Our dishes use fish purchased straight from the fishermen themselves. So you can always look forward to the freshest of fish. That's great. See up here? Where's my Joshua? I was able to spend another day relaxing here today. It's important to get away from your daily routine when you're worn out. When I return home, reality is waiting for me, so I'd better enjoy myself while I can. There are a lot of people who come to this inn to fish. Just a little while ago, an old man came here from Bose and spent all day fishing before going home. I'm thinking about giving it a try myself. Well, you should, Annette. You'll probably enjoy it. Alright, the fishing rod is mine now, by the way. Not giving it back. Alright, let's... Oh. Ah, he's probably on the West Pier. Let's go finding our boy. Our dear adopted brother. Emphasis on adopted. <sighs> hey there, laddie! What are you doing whittling away the evening in a place like this? <laughs> Not much. How about yourself? Are you done fishing, or are you heading back into battle? No, I already have my fill. It sure has been a while since I did, though. Oh, that reminds me. Estelle held out the book she found on the table. You said you were going to read, but you ended up leaving your book on the table. You should be more careful with your stuff. Oh, that. I actually finished reading it. My eyes were starting to feel a bit tired, so I thought I'd take a walk for a change. Liar. Oh, what? You're hiding your feelings again, aren't you? I can tell that's what you're doing. Uh, and besides, that's not really fair. You always find a way to cheer me up when I'm feeling down. And while I may not be as reliable as Dad, I can still give you a shoulder to lean on. Uh, uh, sorry. It's time like these when you should say thank you and not apologize. You may be smart, Joshua, but you sometimes don't seem to know what's important. What's most important. <laughs> You're probably right. Thanks, Estelle. 
Very good. Now that wasn't too bad, was it? Oh, right. And in return, how about you play me a song on your harmonica? As you wish. Is the whereabouts of light good for you? <laughs> yep, that's the one I wanted to hear. Ah yes, an intimate concert. I wonder why it is that when I hear the sound of your harmonica in the evening, light like this, it makes me want to cry. Uh, so you're still not going to ask about my past, I mean. Um, we promised, remember? You were going to tell me when you felt like it. And I wasn't going to ask, right? And considering that five years have passed, it doesn't seem like such a big deal anymore. Yeah, it has been five years, hasn't it? How can you just live with me for that long and not have a million questions? That day, your father came home with this beat-up kid. Some random stranger who never says a word about his past. Why'd you take him in like that? Well... It seemed like the obvious thing to do. Besides, you're family now, Joshua. Uh, and like I said before, I know you pretty well. You love books, you're a weapons geek, and you've got a serious knack for just about anything that comes your way. You're kind and fair, we also got a way of not letting others inside by using politeness like a shield. Now wait a minute. And you're caring. And lonely. Uh, of course, I don't know everything about your past. If you want to make comparisons, I don't know a whole lot about Dad's past either. But it doesn't mean that he and I aren't family, right? Being a family for us has more to do with me knowing his personality, his habits, the food he likes. You know, the kind of things that only I would know firsthand. And you're no different, Joshua. Uh, you make it nearly impossible to argue with you, you know that? It's been like that since the first time we met. And you gave me that flying kick to the gut as I was lying in bed. Wounded, I might add. Um, did I really do that? Yeah, injured and all. More than once. <laughs> I'm sure it was just a bit of childish play. Uh, blame dad for my lack of social graces. Yeah, sure. Nice excuse. But anyway, Estelle. What? Let's make sure we solve this old airliner mystery. I don't know if dad's been captured or anything. Let's resolve this with our own hands. Sure. That's exactly what I intend to do. <laughs> How about we head back to the inn? I'm sure supper's ready by now. Great idea. I'm starving. We need to eat our fill so we're ready for tonight. <sighs> you do. That was a nice little moment with Joshua. But now... Oh, I, I almost forgot. Here's your book, Joshua. Oh, right. Estelle held out the book she found on the table. I'm actually done with it. And at this point, it'd just end up being bulk weight. I wonder what I should do with it. Now... I do not believe this choice really matters, but if we ask if we can read it, we get to keep it, so that's what I'm going to go with. It looks like a pretty difficult book, but do you think if I spend some time with it, I'd understand? 
I'm sure you'd be fine. There's already a lot of stuff you know in there anyway. So do you want to take a stab at it, Estelle? Sure, I'll give it a shot. Ah, yeah. Thanks, bro. You're the best. So, how... Things don't look too good here. Help a fellow out. I'm begging you. I, I can't take another drink. Wow, I think I've just reconsidered my opinion of you, Olivier. It's pretty rare for anyone to still be conscious after a night of wine with Shara. <laughs> well, didn't the two of you come at a good time? How about having a drink together? You're both good for that, right? We're going to eat dinner now, so the answer is no. Oh, come on, you two. When I say let's drink, we drink. You're gonna make me very angry if you don't sit down for a glass with me. Oh, great. She's already reached stage two, rage mode. Don't worry, Shara. Olivier said he's good for another couple of rounds. How about having him keep you... How about having him keep your company? Tch. What? So you can still drink more, can you? Hey, Joshua, how could you just give me to her like that? I can't, I, I can't. Don't you feel sorry for the poor guy? I don't know, should I? <laughs> oh, you're like a little demon and cute at the same time, too. <laughs> At least the fish are polite here. <laughs> I guess he'll ju be just fine. How about we sit at the counter? I'd hate to bother the two of them. <laughs> right, good idea. Aw, oh, poor guy. Please, Shara, I'm pleading with you. You and the fish. Don't pour me another glass. <laughs> uh. Poor guy. All right. 40 minutes in. We're about to... No, how can this be one episode? Uh, oh, well, there he is. Oh, 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 girl. Oh, he's totally plastered. Looks like even a guy who takes his sweet time for everything couldn't stand up to a drunken Shara. Oh, wow. What a night of drinking. I've been so busy lately, I haven't been able to enjoy myself like this for a while. And you're not even red in the face either from all that alcohol. Are you sure you haven't had some kind of special kind of training, Shara? Um, it could have been all the bizarre liquors I drank while I was in the troop. You know, like the ones with scorpions and asps in them. I might have built up my resistance that way, but who knows. Somehow, I don't think that that's the case. By the way, what do you plan on doing with him? He's pretty much useless as he is. Let's just let him sleep. He looks so peaceful now, and we wouldn't want to disturb him. There's a very high possibility that we'll have a direct encounter with the Sky Bandits tonight. And getting a civilian wrapped up in the middle of it all wouldn't be a good idea. Don't tell me you... You got Olivier drunk so he wouldn't be able to come along, didn't you? Well, uh, of course I did. And he'll thank me in the long run, too. After his raging hangover, anyway. And so that whole time, you were just toying with him, weren't you? Let's see. It's getting late. Let's hurry and begin our stakeout around the inn. <laughs> Don't scare it around the issue, Shara. Quiet, you. For the time being, we're going to circle up to the far pier. Understood. All right then, let's go. Oh, poor guy. Oh, Shara, please. I can't take another. <sighs> hey, Lloyd. Lloyd is staring at an open map. It appears to be a map of Valeria Lake. There are hardly any structures on the west side. I didn't get many bites either. And all I'm getting on the east side are small side fish. A guardian probably won't appear in either of these two places. I guess the best thing I can do 
is to continue fishing from the shore. Good luck to you, dude. How are you people? Good evening. Seeing another group of lodgers is something I enjoy. I'd love to keep company with you if that would be alright. Even if we barge into your dorm in the middle of the night? My mother seems to be enjoying the atmosphere. I was the first person to recommend this inn to my mother. Now she invites me to come here with her every year. That's wonderful. Oh, so, whoops, whoops, schnoobity schnoo. Are you going out? If you're going to fish at night, you're going to need an augment light you won't be able to see. That's a good point. That gentleman with you seems to have drunk a lot. Is he going to be alright? If you would like, I can bring you some water. Nah, he'll, he'll, he'll sleep it off. Ah. The shore side at night. Make a save right here. Evening session. Fitting, given the grand scheme of things. Um, I don't see anyone. I don't know what kind of business those siblings could have here. Do you think they'll really show up? There's no guarantee, of course, but if Lloyd's information has any truth to it, my best guess is that they'll be here. However, if we move around too much, there's a possibility we'll be seen and they'll take off. Since the Sky Bandits are supposed to come from the road, it might be a good idea to watch the area. Right, so where should we watch from? We need a place where we can see the road without being noticed ourselves. A place like that would be ideal. All right, all right. Well, we should we should start looking around. What about up here? Could we like sneak along here? Look at this. It's perfect. We can, we can hide behind this tree. They'll, they'll never see it coming. Or this tree. We just climb it and we're good. I'm just saying, we, we break up a couple of branches, stitch them to our hair, and just pretend like we're a tree. Then we make like tree noises. They'll never know what's up. I think we should go up on the second floor. H hey, what's that? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Kyle. Well, looks like we're a little early, huh? Yeah, it seems that way. You know, if this were the middle of the day, we could have gotten ourselves a bite to eat on the way. Quit talking nonsense. We're outlaws, remember? Now let's hurry up and get moving. Uh, oh, wait for me, Kyle. Ah, siblings. Uh-huh. I should have known it'd be them. It looks like they're headed for the far pier. I wonder what they intend to do. Shall we take a look and find out? Let's try to get as close as we can without being noticed. Indeed, indeed. Here we go. Super sneaky. Oh, su- I should have figured they wouldn't be here yet. I always come exactly on time. I really hate those guys. They act like they're so superior. And to be honest, they're kind of scary. No doubt about that. They're quite the clandestine bunch. There's not much we can do about it. This is an order from Don. This seems to be a good place. Yeah, we can hear every word they're saying too. Uh, uh. Hey, Kyle? Don't you think Don's been acting a bit strange recently? Oh. It's just not like him if you ask me. You know, the whole hijacking of airliners thing. While I admit it was lucrative, now we got the army clamping down on us full scale. Not to mention those annoying bracers are now involved. And he's gone and taken hostages and demanded a ransom in return. No matter how I think about it, Seems like Don has gone way overboard this time. In the end, you'll always be just a girl. Deep down, you're just not cut out to run with a bad crowd. Excuse me? Okay, maybe not the best wording, but I meant it as a compliment. 
If things are getting too tough for you, you're always welcome to try salvaging a life back home. It shouldn't be too hard to get by as long as you don't set your sights too high. Although admittedly, it is a bit colder than liberal. D do you think you could just treat me like a kid and I'm not going to get angry? I'd like to see you get by without me, what with your crap cooking and all, not to mention the laundry. Do you really want to go back to burnt toast and turning your underwear inside out? Uh, huh. Okay, okay. I see your point. I really am sick of toast, burnt or otherwise. But anyway, think about what I said before it gets too late to back out. <clears throat> now, getting back to what you said earlier, I do have to agree that Don has been acting pretty weird. Does he expect us to just keep fishing for ransom? We should take what we can get. And I'd like to believe that Don is smart enough to see that. Don't you think he started acting strange about the time that guy showed up? That's the only thing I can think of as to why he started acting like this. Yeah, he was the one who introduced us to those other guys too. Might even have gotten Don to buy into his ideas. Who is that guy and he? That's certainly a good question. Huh? What's that over there? What's what? It looks like whoever it was they were waiting for finally showed up. Ah, the plot thickens. The Sky Bandits aren't the masterminds here. It looks like you made it. On time as usual, huh? Hmm. Could've come a little early, for a change. Or even late. Definitely not my type, that's for sure. Ah. Uh. Black clad soldier. Hmm. Say what you will, but we're trained to be punctual. Now, if that displeases you, then let me offer my sincerest apology. Uh, relax! I was just being sarcastic. Now, I know you guys are definitely not the type I want to be around. Enough already! Don't have time for that! Now, how about we get down to the business? Have there been any other developments since last time? Yes, in fact, Her Majesty has finally made a move. She intends to contribute to the ransom from her own assets. S seriously We're gonna get paid out of the Queen's own pocket? I guess we're pretty close to getting the money then, right? How about the Royal Army? Is there any indication that they've figured out where our hideout is? Not yet. But it's only a matter of time until they do. We've received reports that members of the Bracer Guild are on the move as well. At any rate, on the morning of the payoff, you'll need to leave your hideout behind. Yeah, no problem there. We just happened to run into the temporary shelter by chance. Don shouldn't have any regrets about it either. <sighs> there are way too many suspicious types involved in this. What do you want to do, Shara? Should we just storm in? Shoot them all, let ADO sort them out? Hmm, I've got a much better idea. A better idea? These two siblings appearing here means that the Sky Bandit's airship is parked somewhere nearby. There's not much we could do if they got away again, so how about we try taking that out first? I see. Take away their means of escape, right? I'm down for that. How about you, Joshua? Ah. Uh, Joshua? Uh, oh, uh, right. Take out the airship first, right? Yeah, I think it's a good idea, too. What's wrong? Your face looks really tense all of a sudden. It's nothing. Yeah, I'm sure it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Ah, the foreshadowing. The plot thickens. Huh? We don't have much time. We gotta get out onto the road and start looking for that airship before they finish their meeting. Alright. With that, we probably shouldn't go any closer to them. We should get onto the road! Now, we are approaching an hour. I don't know. I might have to split this. I don't know. We'll figure that out for now. Let's go find that airship. The party took to the road in search of the location of the airship. And... Ah, yeah.
So they're parked in front of the Amberl Tower, huh? This is definitely the perfect place to land since it's off the main road. Sorry, I had a bit too much to drink. So what do you want to do, Shara? Should we subdue them? Hmm, that's one way to go about things. There's more than double their numbers since the last time we encountered them. Don't worry, even with twice as many guys, they're no match for us. So how about we take them all on at once? Oh... Is this... I don't remember who this is. This has to be Olivier, right? Showing up. Hmm... I don't know if that's the best way to go about things. Ah, yeah. Sorry to keep you all waiting. Oh, Oli! Keep it down. They're gonna hear you. Oh. Well, isn't this a surprise? I can't believe you're standing here after the state you were in before. Your tolerance is... impressive. Oh, who do you think you're talking to? Rather than miss a minute of your fair company, I dutifully puked my guts up and dumped a bucket of cold water over my head. Voila, I was good to go. I don't know about that. I think I hear your liver screaming somewhere in there. That's some serious tenacity. Oh, come on, I couldn't let you enjoy all the fun yourselves, right? I had just come out of the inn when I saw you guys hit the road, so I come running from behind to catch up with you. I guess I went a little easy on you. Maybe I should have had you down all that brandy at once. You'd have put me to sleep for good if you'd done that, Shara. But anyway, fighting the Sky Bandits here would lack finesse, don't you think? I don't think that's the issue here. No, I'm serious. Even if you subdue the Null and manage to arrest the two siblings, there's still a chance they won't tell you where their hideout is. And they might even use the hostages as leverage to demand their release. Well, there's a risk involved with whatever course of action we take. Or do you have a good plan on how we can avoid taking such a risk? Ha! Huh, boy, do I ever! Listen up, everyone. Okay. But if you blow in my ear... I'm seriously going to punch your lights out. Alright, here we go. Kyle! Josette! It's good to see you made it back. I didn't think you'd be gone so long. So talks took longer than expected, huh? Yeah, we're nearing an end with our negotiations. We also managed to get a great deal of information about what's going on with the Royal Army. So what you're saying is... Yep, we'll be getting the ransom money within a few days. We'll finally be one step closer to making our dream a reality. We did it! Sweet! Cool it down, guys. It's a little too early to be getting excited yet. For the moment, we need to get back to the hideout and report to Dawn. Alright, everyone! Pack up and let's get out of here. Roger that, 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 Oh no, they're flaying, whatever. What must we do now? The temperature outside is 69.8 degrees with 15% humidity. There is a south-southwest wind blowing at a speed of 12 arge. There are no orbital reactions in the surrounding area. It looks like the army isn't patrolling here. Activate the orbital engine and begin transmitting orbital energy to each section of the airship. Hi, sir. Orbital engine activated. Transmission of orbital energy to all sections underway. Orbital floater started. Orbital driver started. Stabilizers all green. All right. Lift off. Aye, aye, sir. Oh no! They're leaving! Oh well, we gave it our best. Set the drive rate to 40% to maintain cruising speed. However, make sure that we can switch to battle speed at any time. Aye sir. It looks like we'll make it back before morning. Yeah. I'm ready for some serious shut-eye myself. 
I gotta report to Dawn first. Huh? Did you just hear something? No, I didn't hear anything. That's odd. I could have sworn it came from below deck. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I wonder where our friends could be. Maybe it's just a mouse or something. I'll have to clean up the place when I can find some free time.